Uh, where do I start unpacking this old chestnut? Um, I wrote this song when I was uh, 33, so that's 12 years ago. Um, and let's start with the tuning. Um, the tuning that I'm in here is B flat, F, B flat, F, B flat, C. Uh, and then it's capoed at the fourth fret, so the note values are D, uh, D, A, D, A, D, E. Uh, which is open. It's not quite open. It's not quite an open C shape. That's the best way to describe it. That tuning uh, is very close to, if you were in standard tuning, the, the quickest way to get to this tuning is to tune your guitar C, G, C, G, C. D. Uh, that would be this. I'm a whole step down for reasons that are too complicated to go into here. But um, at that point you have an open C chord, but it is neither major nor minor because it has, instead of, a, instead of an E major up top, it has a D which leaves it suspended. So it can be either major or minor or neither. Uh, this is a tuning my friend David Goodrich came up with, and he uh, he wrote this piece of music on it. Which is a beautiful little tune, we'll get to it in some other session. Uh, so I just took the tuning and I, you know, capoed it a little further up and sort of wandered and came up with this thing. about it and you know it's it stuck with me enough that I knew I wanted to write a tune out of it what I like is that there's this uh, element of it that remains the same uh, and that's what uh, contrary motion is is the is the big lofty technique being employed there, which is to say uh, one thing is static and repeats itself, but underneath it the bass notes change. And so the stationary thing that keeps repeating appears itself to be moving because the background behind it moves, although it's standing still. And so, uh, you know, we primates with our limbic systems love stuff like that. And so, you know, my, um, my process, uh, once I've got something like that, something that clearly a song wants to be written out of this structure, it's usually, or in the past, it was a matter of months, uh, where I would just play it around the house, just play that and play that and play that. Uh, I have those things floating around. I sometimes like to think of them as mulch, you know, uh, musical ideas that are just, they're just there and I spread them on the ground. The lyrical ideas too in notebooks, mulch. And you just, just spread them there and go back and turn the stuff over and eventually something will grow out of it. And something did, um, which is uh, this. <laughs> had our melody, uh, which probably grew out of a, a similar impulse. The melody itself is repetitive, and what changes is the chords underneath it. <coughs> so that's, <coughs> that's delightful, isn't it? Uh, and usually once I get to that stage, once I, uh, once I have a melody, it's just, probably it's just a matter of weeks. And, and so um, this song really launched itself when I was... Uh, Every few years or so, I gather up all my notebooks and all of all the letters that I might find embarrassing letters that uh, an old girlfriend had returned to me, stuff like that. Just, you know, I have boxes of that stuff like anybody. And I burn them. I, uh, I get a fire pit in the driveway. It was a wintertime thing. And, I, and uh, so I'm burning these letters in the snow. 
which is a resonant enough thing, but I thought of uh, Sam Shepard's, uh, one of the last lines in Sam Shepard's play, A Lie of the Mind, where the girl uh, says, it looks like a fire in the snow. I've always loved the simple poetics of that. And then that was it. Light a fire, burn them. Oh, you know you've had so much time just to let things go. Now you're burning letters out in the snow in your backyard. Probably the other thing that was in my in the background of my mind when I wrote those three lines that all rhyme and have that long vowel word uh, at the end of each line, and then. The fourth line ends much more abruptly. In your backyard uh, was um, was Elliot. Let us go then, you and I, as the evening is spread out against the sky like a patient etherized upon a table. Um, again, just a little variety in the sonic uh, and rhythmic motion. You know, establish a precedent and then change the precedent. And again, us primates just love that crap. So uh, now we're off and running because. It's sort of done. Um, my buddy John Seeger puts this really well. Like as soon as you have a good verse and it and it, and it frames something, like who's burning letters, why are they burning letters, how, where do we go from here? The song is done. Writing the rest of the song is a formality. You might do it well or poorly, as you might plaster a ceiling well or poorly, but the dimensions of the ceiling in question have been established and your job now is just the, the taping and the plastering and the mudding and the sanding. Um, so the second verse is a, an elaboration uh, just on the question that is obvious which is why is this dude burning letters? Years go rolling you're 33 it is time for the cross Time for the ball to change. Still, you like to cry. Oh, you cry, you skin your knee. It's hard. Um, so the rhyme scheme was already established. Uh, so that's just you're just working within a framework. It's so much easier to create from something than from nothing. Now we know we're going to have three rhyming lines and then a line at the end that has an abrupt rhythmic end and. Also, that will rhyme with the end line of the first verse, uh, and then you know uh, what I'm trying to say with that verse, and hopefully saying with that verse is um, to be 33 years old. You feel as though perhaps you ought to be established. And there's the comparisons in the second line to both uh, Jesus and Buddha, and. Uh, I guess the sentiment there is, you know, you're 33, certain people we could mention founded world religions, and you feel like you don't even have your, your shit remotely together. But of course, uh, if you were just to say, you know, I'm 33 years old now, and I thought that I would feel like I had it more together now, but I don't have it more together. In fact, I feel like I can, can barely cope. And when little problems come up, they overwhelm me, and I feel like I should be beyond that by now. You'd be telling the same truth, but it wouldn't fly as a lyric. Now, would it? So now we've got two verses, and we need a chorus. Uh, and um, in this case, a little bit of chord substitution. Uh, instead of going to a four chord, We've already used the one chord and the six minor chord and the four chord and the one chord. Instead of going to a four or um, instead of going to a four, we go to a two minor. And we have that descending line and then a five chord, which is which is very new information. I mean, we haven't had a two minor chord before, but we have had a two minor chord because we've had a four. So it's not particularly outside, but this, the chorus consists of uh, those two chords, the two minor and the five major, with that descending motif. And uh, harmonizing with that. Uh, we were in unison before. Light of fire, burn all you know. You've had. Uh, 
And now we're in harmony with the descending line. Uh, it's the same old friend zone. No, sorry, that's unison. <laughs> New Year's Eve, the same snow falls on the same old leaves. And then the third line is in harmony. There's the same old joy, same old hurt. Same old corduroy suit. So there's a little echo too of the verses because you got um, even leaves, uh, joy, and then hurt. You have that those sort of longer vowel sounds and then hurt, like yard. Um, same old corduroy suit. Now we have just a moment to improvise over the over the changes, which is one of my favorite parts of the song, where I get to do some little boogaloo. out some you know some little uh, bit of musical vocabulary like that backstage and, and then I go on stage and on stage you're always slightly more or I am always a little more amped up and everything's just a little more sort of uh, caffeinated and trigger happy and so uh, and so it's never as good I always play like a pretty decent little solo considering that I have to hold down the Thumb. I have to hold down the sort of the comping and the soloing at the same time. Backstage, I'll play like a, you know, like a reasonably competent solo and then get on stage and kind of choke it. <laughs> but that's life. I'm learning to relax. I figure by the time I'm, you know, 65 and performing and I got white eyebrows that threaten to claim the microphone, I'll, I'll be all... Um, what else can I say about this tune? Now we just need a third verse, a fourth verse, and, uh, and a double chorus. So, uh, old storm windows and the broke tail squirrel. So we've established who this, the speaker is. This guy that oddly is speaking to himself in the second person. I remember I did not even notice that about this song until I played it in a high school and somebody asked me if why. Why is this song in the second person when the narrator is pretty clearly you? And I probably said some horse hockey about, um, you know, there's sort of a distancing mechanism involved there. Uh, <laughs> whatever it was that I said, the truth is just that I'm shy. Weird way, since you're watching a video of me unpacking this stuff. Oh, the truth is probably that I don't know. I have no idea why, but I just started this song in second person, which makes it, um, well, it certainly gives a certain feeling when the song shifts the way it does these days into first person on the last chorus. So, anyway, um, we've established our narrator, and now our narrator starts talking about his home. Old storm windows and the broke tail squirrel and the gross of the lists and the skateboard girls. Oh, your rusty brain cells, they give you a twirl. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Uh, parenthetical note the girls in my neighborhood don't actually ride skateboards, they ride bicycles. But bicycle girls is not nearly as singable. God, I love to write. Um, now, when I play this live these days, I change it to first person, which is sort of uh, turning over that card of admitting that it's me we're talking about anyway. And uh, I've got a kitchen radio, coffee on. I could use a month just to lean up on. Still, this open road wants to 
get me gone, off I go. So we've had all these home details, and now we're talking about leaving home as soon as we've established the setting. We're talking about leaving the setting. And now here's where the co-write comes in. This song was co-written by David Goodrich, which is to say that when I first wrote it in the first few days after I wrote it, I, the last chorus was something like, same old sky, a same old wheel. It was much more generalized, and it just wasn't as strong. And um, sometimes the best co-writer just comes in and says, you know, bullshit, you can do better than that. What are you really talking about? And shouldn't there be a double chorus anyway? It's so strong. Wouldn't you want to stretch that out? That's pretty much all he contributed. Uh, but that was enough, because the double chorus at the end is the song. You know, It's the same old job of car keys by the door. I was reading a lot of Seamus Heaney back then, as now, and so I was all about these internal rhymes and the chewy jar of car keys. And also, you know, we just mentioned the road and now we're talking about car keys. Same old jar of car keys by the door, the same old scuffed up floor. What are we really talking about? The same old thirst for more till they put me in the dirt. It's worth mentioning that uh, compositionally I saved that chord, the flat six, sort of the gospel chord, the passing chord. In this case, it would be like, uh, what would it be? It would be a... Um... Right, it would be an F sharp dominant with a, with a B flat in the bass. So like the gospel chord passing us into the, the minor. Uh, and it's at the most poignant moment of the song, I think, or the moment I find the most poignant, which is, you know, same old thirst for more until they put me in the dirt. <laughs> Why am I doing this? And there it is. Parenthetically, I've sung this song duet with so many artists uh, on little stretches of the road, and I've noticed myself, I always smile at that line because it's so, you know, <laughs> pathetic and wonderful and uh, has to do with death, for crying out loud. God, death. But I've also noticed something my, <laughs> I can usually catch a friend also smiling at that line. God, we love to write. And now a double chorus, so you just turn around out of the five chord and it's the same old nights alone, it's the same old Baby, when you come in home to feel the same old joy, feel the same old hurt. All the way through to the end of the song before the other person who lives in the home gets mentioned. Uh, but again, play your trump cards last. Uh, pack your emotional dynamite if you have any at the end of your railroad cars. Same old card of Russert. So there it is. Uh, that was mostly focusing, I know, on the, the lyrical and sort of narrative content and only glancingly talking about the composition. Um, if you guys want later, I'll, uh, I'll pr I could probably dive a little bit more into the just the guitarism of the tune. But there is that tune. Uh, I still love playing that tune now, some 12 years after I wrote it. Uh, I smiled a couple of years back when I laughed it and became 43. Went all the way around the track and it rhymed again. Before you know it, I'll have gone 10 more years around the track. There it is though, shirt. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed that.